Let's bring in Michael Waltz, Republican congressman from Florida, serves on the House Armed Services Committee and is also a former Green Beret commander. So the president last week in the Middle East and over the weekend yeah. looking for support for a new Iran deal. When he got to Israel, though, he was met with a, a real difference of opinion yep. uh, as to how to go about reigning in Iran when he was with the prime minister, Yair Lapid. Listen to this press conference here and note, note the difference in position. You made it absolutely clear. We will not, let me say it again, we will not allow Iran to acquire a nuclear weapon. I continue to believe that diplomacy is the best way to achieve this outcome. Words will not stop them, Mr. President. Diplomacy will not stop them. The only way to stop them is to put a credible military threat on the table. That was a real sharp contradiction, yeah. and, and that was in prepared remarks as That's well. Right. So Lapid really wanted to drive that point home. Yeah, you could drive a Mack truck through the, the, the difference in those uh, opinions and those positions there. Look, I'm with Lapid on this one. I think at this point, the only thing that is going to stop the Supreme Leader from his nuclear obsession is a very credible use and threat of military force. Look, nobody wants war, nobody wants a conflict, but this is about deterrence. And at this point, with Iran believing they are this close, remember they have to have the fissile material, but also the ballistic missiles and the ability to weaponize it. Uh, I think this is the only thing that will stop them. And what does that mean? That means a very clear statement from the commander in chief. We did not get that in that press conference, but it also means credibly moving forces into the region and it most importantly selling the Israelis giving the Israelis the technical sophisticated military equipment that they've been asking for and haven't been getting from this administration doesn't this statement from the supreme leader that they can build a nuclear bomb if they want to right now doesn't that sort of demand a response from the Biden administration well again we get this I, I think it demands a very clear response uh, and that when we say we will not allow Iran to have a bomb, what does that mean? What are we prepared to do to stop it? The Israelis are very clear and we, one, need to be clear alongside them, but two, need to be clear to the region that we will support Israel if they have to take action to take this bomb down. And why does this matter to the American people? You know, why does it really so critical to even use military force to stop Iran from having a bomb? Number one, you're seeing what Putin believes he can get away with under a nuclear umbrella. The regime wants that same capability, but I think even more critically is the entire Middle East will explode in a nuclear arms race. The Saudis will have a bomb, the Turks will have a bomb, maybe even the Emiratis, uh, the UAE will want theirs too. And that's not the interest of anyone uh, to have the, the Middle East literally uh, exploding in a nuclear arms race with all of these leaders with their finger on the button. So when you say put forces in the region, what, what, what does that look like? We've got the Sixth Fleet based in Bahrain, but staging troops in Saudi Arabia is probably not doable. Where else would you put them? Well, you can put them in the UAE, you can put them in Bahrain, uh, you can put them in northern Iraq uh, with our allies, the Kurds. Uh, ironically, even though Biden promised a drawdown and bringing forces home uh, after he pulled out of Afghanistan, we still have just as many forces in the Middle East. But it's putting the right types of capabilities that send the signal to the Iranians, uh, we can we have the will and we have the capability to take down your program. Again, I pray that we never have to do that. But as a deterrent measure, I think that's the only thing that's going to stop the regime's march towards a nuclear weapon. And signaling that support for the Israelis and giving them what they need is also critical. So it's certainly a tough trip for the president to look at in terms of you know, any gains that were made here. It looks like a lot of short-term costs to, the, you know, to his administration and to the reputation of the U.S. Sure. Uh, and questionable you know, what we're going to get out of it in the end. What did he walk away with, yeah. right? I mean, he didn't walk away with an oil deal. Basically, the Saudis said, we'll think about it. Yeah. Uh, we got a very mixed reaction, a very different page uh, from Israel. Yeah. And look, we're approaching the one-year anniversary of Afghanistan, where our credibility took a massive hit. And when you have, whether it was the trip to Poland or this trip, with no deliverables for the commander-in-chief on the world stage, uh, that, that just further damages our credibility and dictatorships, authoritarian regimes are emboldened yeah. Yeah. by perceived weakness uh, and, and they're certainly not deterred by what they're seeing. The one thing he walked away from was a face full of criticism from members of his own party for that fist bump. So. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Congressman, good to All see right. you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.